uh, I mean, I watched uh, Israeli soldiers beat up Palestinian kids several times, not just not just the time we were trying to film it, but um, for what reason? Well, I think the reasons are that um, first of all, young kids are suspect, sus suspected of of being the stone throwers. And that's not an acceptable thing to be doing, of course, in a, I mean, not acceptable to the Israelis. Um, and one of the, one of the uh, Palestinian cafe owners where I was sitting having some tea, watching this, one of these beatings about 50 feet away across, this, across the alley in this little plaza, and the soldiers were ramming something down this kid's throat, and the kid was throwing up. And, was, and I said, what are they doing? I don't understand it. And it's nothing, of course, it's nothing that we would do either. But I mean, you know, the United States cuts off ears and heads and stuff. But he said, oh, this is a way they humiliate the Palestinians. They, they want to make them throw up in front of the soldiers. I mean, I don't know, that was really hard to believe, you know, but I, I saw it. And there were three soldiers and two kids and Two of the soldiers held one kid while the other, I mean, there was one soldier kind of keeping track of, of one kid and then the two soldiers were holding the other one as one of them was putting a stick or something down his throat. And the Palestinian cafe owner said, this is not uncommon. Now, I also went and met with the Yeshkubu prisoners. These are the Israeli soldiers who refused to fight in the West Bank and Gaza. Uh, they're in a, uh, they were in a prison in, in, uh, uh, in uh, I think it's called, uh, it's up near, uh, it's up near um, on the, the northern shore of the Mediterranean, uh, near Tel Aviv, I think. Uh, and I was with a lot of uh, Israelis who were there supporting the prisoners. You know, they were outside the prison uh, supporting the prisoners who had resisted. And I was with other, other Israelis sitting in front of bulldozers which were trying to uh, tear down Bedouin villages for new settlements. So I was with other Israeli citizens who are obviously not supporting the Israeli government's policies, uh, and I was thrilled to be with locked arms of those Israeli citizens who said no to these bulldozers. And in that case, the bulldozers then ran over us like did Rachel Corey. But uh, I see, uh, the, you know, the, they're all Semites. They've been there for thousands, a couple thousand, three thousand years. I do. I think my own opinion is that a two-state solution will never work. It'll be a one-state solution. And I was with lots of Palestinians who got along with Israelis, and I was with other Israelis that got along with Palestinians. Uh, and it's really, uh, but obviously, there's a lot of Palestinians that hate the Israelis, a lot of Israelis that hate the Palestinians. But. Um, I, I don't know. It's just it, the fact that my country gives four billion dollars a year to Israel is uh, unconscionable. But it's something. It's it's understandable from a geopolitical imperial point of view. Um, but it's. Uh, um, I mean, from from an empire point of view, wanting to have our base in the Middle East of basically Western thinking people, with all those Arabs. Um, they're a really a trusted ally. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, how do you explain the, the, the bombing of the U.S. Liberty in 1967? The, 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 I mean, what's the explanation for that? There's something, some co some deep collusion that requires us to not condemn Israel. Because some, I mean, does anybody have a theory about the U.S.S. Liberty? Yes. That the U.S. intelligence ship that was bombed by the Israelis. By the Israelis, thirty-four oh, soldiers killed, one hundred seventy injured, and Johnson and McNamara refused to condemn it and told them, told the other U.S. ships not to come to their aid. Okay. What was the reason that the Israeli government gave for bombing the U.S. Yeah, well, I've never heard a really clear explanation for it. I, I don't know that they've even acknowledged it. I mean, they, the, there's some of the, 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 a couple of the pilots said they thought it was, a, they thought, it was, you know, that was a mistake. 
that they, but the U.S. flag was flying on the ship, and uh, it was an intelligence gathering ship. And there's a lot of uh, who saw the film. Did you see the Mike? Remember the film we saw recently, in Portland State? Yeah, I think this About is what this. I this is what I think. I think that when the, the, you know, with the Six Day War in Egypt, I think that what was happening is that uh, the USS Liberty was a, was a setup to uh, the Israeli planes were unmarked, and their job was to sink it and blame it and blame on Egypt. Egypt. And blame Egypt. That's I think what that was what it was, and a lot of people just think that's unfathomable that our government would do that, and of course... Nothing is unfathomable. I'm just saying that, but, but I, I think that's what it was. I think it was a setup, and, I, and, and if that would ever be disclosed, it would absolutely dismantle a lot of stuff in this country. And of course, I know what happened. I'm a the mistake was that they didn't sink it. Right, the mistake was that they didn't sink it. Mistake. Uh, that it was intended to be sunk, and they had hit it with torpedoes from ships and bombs from the air and machine guns from planes. And uh, there was like a sitting deck. It was lucky they didn't, they didn't sink, but it was that way. I think we think that was in. And there were certain people uh, up a certain level in the naval chain of command that said, go out there, find out what the Israelis are doing. You know, it's typical for them to keep an eye yeah. on what's going on. Right. And uh, there were people upstairs in the CIA and the executive office that said, wait a minute, we've got, we've got a request from the Israeli government. They don't want the world to know what Israel is doing to Egypt. Okay, we don't want this information getting out. You know, they're looking at us and we're going to put a stick in their eye. And that's big. And so the, uh, I think that our, you know, Higher ups, the DOD, the, the secretary, it was McNamara at the time, mm -hmm. you know, told him to, to, gave his okay <coughs> to the Israeli Air Force to take it out. There's a comment back here. But that's just my theory. Yeah, it could be. I had a question about um, your views on the Iraq war and the Afghanistan and Iraq war. Um, what do you My views on the war in Iraq, mm -hmm. Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Uh, well, I'm a pacifist, so you know that I never agree with any military action my government takes outside our borders, and probably not in our borders either. Uh, but that's never really an issue. I mean, we have, we've actually used the military in our borders many times over our history to quell strikes and take over railroads and stuff like that. But. Mm -hmm. What's going on is just sheer madness, and it's, uh, I can't understand why intelligent people can think that you can bomb other people. Uh, because I witnessed the effects of the bombing in Vietnam, and then I've been to many other war zones, uh, I'm going to, every time I go to therapy, and I'm going to be in the VA therapy tomorrow morning, I'm talking about the bombings in Afghanistan and Pakistan and Iraq, and how much it affects my body. I mean, it affects me viscerally. It's like they're bombing me. 